Our correspondent Jessica King joining us from Paris for more on that. Jessica, uh, give us uh, uh, update, uh, more updates now in terms of the measures that have been taken by uh, governments across the region and uh, specifically by France. Well, the coronavirus just continues to spread here in France, which will no doubt be causing concern uh, for the government and health ministers here. As you mentioned, a big spike in the past 24 hours, uh, up to 191 confirmed cases, and that was uh, rising from a total of 130 a day earlier. So that will certainly be causing concern. We also have a third death confirmed uh, from COVID-19. This was an 89-year-old uh, patient who went into hospital with respiratory problems it was only sadly after she died that they made the link with coronavirus. But this lady was also from the Oise uh, region of France. Uh, she was about 80 kilometers northeast of Paris. And this is an area uh, that has seen a large number of clusters of cases. So an area that uh, authorities will be very keen to try and stop the spread of coronavirus there. Uh, the director of general health has said this is still the most affected area with 64 cases. But there are other small areas where outbreaks have happened. Uh, he says overall about five regions where there have been more than 10 cases. So, uh, you know, France is now one of the most affected countries in Europe, along with Germany, uh, but still far behind Italy, uh, which has recorded 2,000 people who've tested positive for the virus. Right, and we have uh, been discussing how Italy remains a hot spot here in terms of the lockdowns and uh, measures that have been put in place. Any update there, Jessica? Well, France has decided not to close borders with Italy. Uh, they don't think that that's a sensible measure. But there has been some criticism of how the government is handling its response here in France uh, to the coronavirus, with some people saying that they should be closing the borders and they should be doing more. They should be checking people's temperatures if they come over uh, into France. Uh, and I think, you know, the, the spike that we've seen over the past 24 hours uh, will certainly be worrying a lot of people. Uh, the Fr French government have put in measures to curb the spread, of course. Uh, schools in affected, area have, in affected areas have been closed. Uh, they have sort of postponed school trips. And there is also this rule uh, that large gatherings of 5,000 people or more uh, are not to take place. But also that is causing confusion because there have been some big football matches that have still taken place in France, whereas some smaller sort of gatherings and markets have been closed. So I think a lot of people are wanting a bit more clarity from the government now about how they're dealing dealing with this and how they are working uh, with their partners in Italy uh, to really contain the spread as we just see it um, spreading further. Now, this comes after the EU has raised the risk level, uh, now a moderate to high risk of sustained transmissions between member states. So that will surely be uh, something for them to think about. Uh, the EU bloc generally are trying to coordinate their efforts on this. There is a, certainly a feeling that a, that a group response is definitely better than an individual one. Uh, but of course, this is, uh, has been described by the World Health Organization as a as uncharted territory as the number of cases just seems to be increasing globally. Right. We're going to leave it there for the moment. Jessica and Siddhant appreciate very much for joining us uh, on the broadcast uh, with those details.